Your date of birth holds all the secrets to your soul. Huh? You give us your date of birth, we'll tell you the secrets to love, the secrets to lust, and who the best person for you just might be. I have the answers. Check out Secrets of Birthdays at secretsofbirthdays.com. So Namaste, and welcome to Soul Horoscope's Orbits Edition. From my webcam to yours, I'm Christopher Otecki, your soul biographer, here to take the planets above and put them together into the story of you down here on Earth below. And boy, things have been crazy indeed. Incidentally, if you're trying to jumpstart your heart and have some passion in your life, and I know Scorpios are, and I know Sagittarius are, and I know Cancers are, I know a lot of people are, in 90 minutes I'm going to give you some tools where you can step back into your heart. This is a day-by-day -day thing. This is These are on Saturdays, by the way, and just $33. So it's me working with you on webcam. It's really good. If you want more intense one-on-one -on -one work, well then buy a reading right now. If you buy a one-hour reading with me, you will get a free Free Secrets of Birthday video emailed to you before the reading. And I have lots of slots open uh, in April, so come on down. I book almost within 24 hours at soulmart.me. Well, we have a lot of changes going on, folks. I mean, it has been a bumpy ride. The universe has introduced a lot of Neptune, self-mercy, compassionate, uh, kind of Christian energy. Very Easter Pisces, right? We have a Pope change. We found the God particle in physics. The universe is not messing around. So this is a time of moving forward. Mercury is finally direct. We're going to wrap up the Sun in Pisces and then we're going to hop into Aries pretty aggressively because the Sun is going to jump over Uranus. So without further ado, let's take the Ascension Elevator and take a bird's eye view of you. This is your captain speaking. Please be advised that small knives are not allowed on the Ascension Elevator, as your intellect is sharp enough. Your Ascension today has been powered by the God Particle. And some negative news, we lost your luggage. Hello, Your Honor, and welcome back. This is for Librans, Libran Risings, and also if you bought a Lightcast Report card, we call you a peace artist. That's because that's what Libras are. They are artists at keeping the peace. But a lot of Librans keep only one piece, them. <laughs> Always worried about your own piece. And that's what a lot of what the Sun in Pisces has been about, finding your own peace in the moment. So we're going to wrap up the Sun in Pisces this week on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. You're going to be tested on holding that moment. That's what you worked about 30 days on, was stepping into the moment, stepping into your peace in the moment, bringing the Holy Spirit somewhat down into the moment for you. And that meant some self-mercy and some self-forgiveness in some areas. Now, as we move uh, later on on Wednesday, the sun will move into Aries, focusing on marriages and partnerships. First, it begins with the mirage, and that's really where the most profound work is, still for Librans, is your mirage. That's how well you are fair to yourself, how you relate to others, and how fair you are to yourself when you relate to others. And that really determines whether or not your life is in balance. Then we're going to move into judgment, weighing impartiality, and at the very top of this is marriages, harmony and your ability to have bliss in your life. That's the potential, that's what Librans want, and that's what you're gonna get. But first, you're gonna work on, of course, uh, those issues of the mirage. In fact, the universe is already heavily invested. Venus, your home planet, is here. The Sun, Uranus, and Mars, all focused on long-term partnerships and your mirage. And from Wednesday to Sunday, you're gonna go to uh, from step zero to break down, in other words, discovering where you let yourself down in mirages, all right? But this will be the last year, I just want you to know, that you deal with letting yourself down in mirages. This is it, this is it. Uranus is at eight degrees and you're gonna move forward. On another front, Saturn in Scorpio is retrograde and steps back to step 10, I love and I trust. Now what this deals with is your self-confidence. Time to love and trust with self-confidence. There will be times now with Saturn retrograde where you will have to step up and be the strong one. The universe will not make it easy. Not the universe will make it hard, but the universe will make you step up for it. So be responsible with uh, what you're worth. And then Mercury finally moves direct on Monday. Now it's back in Pisces. So although you're off to la la married land, you're still thinking about your relationship to the moment. 
In fact, at the beginning of the week, Mercury's in step zero, uh, step seven, excuse me, which means that your mind is focused on bringing God literally in the moment. Then by step 10, if you've wanted lifestyle changes, you'll see once Mercury reaches step 10, you'll be able to accomplish certain changes in your daily lifestyle. These could be changes you've been working on for the entire month, by the way. Okay, let's take an even more galactic view of you. Uh, of course, we're going to do it because what is above is below. And we always have our handy timeline in Mr. Happy's, and we always begin with Sunday. Sunday <clears throat> Sunday is sunny and passionate. Excuse me, a little, my voice there, Mercury's just going direct. Mars rules the day, and on Sunday, you're still focused on living in the moment. So it's time to act on that moment. Be careful of injury or accidents on this particular day. When Mars rules the day and you're focused on health and lifestyle, this is where you can kind of trip. Now, the moon is in Gemini, so you're basically self-reflective. You are exploring, and it might be a fantastic learning day for you because the moon will cross over Jupiter on Sunday, really expanding your feelings about something you once believed uh, or now are changing beliefs on. Monday, it's sunny and learning. Definitely doing some learning on Monday. Lots of planets lining up. It's time to graduate the sun in Pisces transit, so it's time to decide just what sort of lifestyle are you committed to, and the highest commitment of that is in the moment. How are you committed to yourself in the moment? I'm going to be peaceful in the moment. I'm going to be chill in the moment. I'm not going to have anxiety in the moment. I'm not going to feel hungry in the moment. That's the biggest thing. So you want to feel what you want, decide, and commit. You're basically holding space on Monday. Uh, and the moon is still in Gemini, so in the background you're learning. But I have to reveal there is some party going on with the aspects. Take a look. For one, we've got this yacht. Remember, it started last week. It continues this week. This yacht points to Jupiter. And what that means for you is to hold space uh, with the Jupiter front, which is the learning. Keep learning. Keep learning. Keep adding information to your mind. That is the saving grace, says the yacht, of what? Well, two very clear areas. One where you are concerned about getting what you deserve. That's Saturn. The other which is your emotions are unsettled and uncertain. That's Pluto. The answer is to keep learning. That's what this yacht says. But there's another yacht. When learning doesn't work, focus on Saturn, which is knowing what you're worth and being clear on what you're not worth. So in times where learning doesn't help, just focusing on your own soul capital and what you deserve will be the, uh, will be the saving grace particularly with the sun, which is mirage and relationships, and also even at times with the learning. The universe is saying with this yod, it is actually going to be uh, your self-esteem that pulls you, some of the self-esteem graduation will be that your self-esteem does in fact pull you through the situation. Then lastly, the moon transit here. Uh, I just want to show the path of the moon here. You can see going on right now. The moon begins crossing Gemini, so it's a big learning. Then it goes into career for two days. Then it goes into society. And then at the very end of the week, there are storms when it triggers some old past life or some karma issues. So I just want to point that out there with the moon. All right. Moving on to Tuesday, sunny and future focused. The moon is in the late stages of Gemini. So you are feeling your purpose, but the universe is also testing you on your ability to remain committed in the moment as you had wanted to. The Chi Chiron is ruling the day, which is the final basically test of the transit to live in the moment as you wish, to be on the path of the lifestyle that you wish, and you must remain in integrity. I love me, I love you. Later in the day, the moon moves into Cancer, shifting emotional focus to career and legacy. Then on Wednesday, it's cloudy but professional again. It's cloudy because we're at zero degrees. I always say zero means zero. The no man's land between two states of awareness. This is the switching of the railroad tracks uh, from focusing on uh, you know, the last month's transit of living in the moment and now focusing on the next transit, which is mirage, marriage, and partnership. Now, the moon is in Cancer. So although you're maybe being pulled to relationship issues, you are feeling a pull to society, and that's part of the weirdness of the day. On top of that, we are blessed with a soul pyramid in water. The universe will unite our emotions behind the scenes as we're switching gears into Aries. What this does for Librans is unite uh, your self-esteem and self, uh, excuse me, it unites your career future. Pardon me, I'm all over the map here. Mercury's just going direct. It unites your feelings of where your career is going with your new sense of what you're worth and over to last month's issue with uh, Chiron there, which is the new lifestyle. So as we're switching gears, I think you are feeling the new lifestyle healing. I think you are feeling that you're no longer being treated like crap. I think you are feeling the future of your career. And the three of those really come together 
uh, to help you mature emotionally. Now the red lines are fears and oppositions. So although you are feeling perhaps uh, this, new, this new career, you might still have some insecurities about whether or not you will be secure. Your emotions are still uneasy. That's unsettled Pluto. And both of those go up to the sun, which is focused on marriage and marriage and partnership. So although you're feeling your career, marriage and partnership, not so much. There's some fear there and security at the bottom. So uh, it's a day of learning emotionally, but at the same time, we don't get away with everything we want. <laughs> uh, and that is just the day. Okay, but things do get better. For instance, on Thursday. Thursday, sunny and professional. The sun clicks into one degree, and so now you will be definitely clear on whether or not you love yourself. Step one is I love. So do you love yourself? Do you love yourself in your mirage? Do you love yourself in the way you respond to yourself, the way you treat yourself, your overall policy of self-care? That's really the question. And with the moon in Cancer, you're going to be pulled out to society, your friends and whatnot, and so it'll be real easy to ignore yourself. So you find yourself depleted at the end of the day. Maybe you're not so nice to yourself. Then we've got Friday. On Friday, it's sunny and social, uh, but things do shift uh, towards the end of the day uh, to most of your professional social life. I think you're going to be mixing the two between profession and social, so it's kind of a hybrid day. You're very passionate. Moon, the moon rules the day, and really, uh, because this is about your mirage, you're really starting to feel yourself on this day. Feel how you relate to yourself. Feel how you respond. Perhaps seeing yourself in public and how you respond in public. So it's really a social good, uh, good day for you in that respect. I would say go out and do whatever your bidding is out in society on this day. Then on Saturn Day, it's sunny and social once again, but this day will be a little bit more obsessed with yourself. Jupiter rolls a day, and so really on Saturday in the background, you're processing what you want, what your life is. The sun is approaching uh, the, uh, Uranus, and so we're starting to feel that breakdown any second, or that decision or proclamation for your new mirage coming up next week. So on this day, although you are out and about maybe in the world, you're actually, I think, processing you and your mirage. That's just my guess. Then on Sunday, showers, chance of storms, I'm afraid. That's because Uranus rules the day. So this is the day where you will discover what's not working in your mirage. Now, it's a, pro it's a possibility that a relationship in your life breaks down, uh, and that relationship leads to that you don't treat yourself right if you're in this relationship. It still comes down to mirage. I know how much you want to make it about someone else, Libra. So there's some sort of breakdown in the mirage. On top of that, the moon moves into Virgo, and so that emotionally shifts uh, your uh, energy uh, to subconscious. So the past might haunt you at the same time. Uh, something from karma might haunt you. Uh, the mirage issue might be triggered by a karmic past life soulmate situation. Okay, all these could be possibilities, but on top of it, it's kind of opposing the super delicate spot of having a happy lifestyle. Let me show you. When the moon moves into Virgo on Sunday, not only are we breaking down with the uh, with the uh, with the Sun in Aries, which me, for you would be a mirage marriage issue, but see the moon in Virgo pulling uh, emotional focus to the subconscious and past is now opposing the lifestyle issue. So in other words, there may be a few moments where you're like, oh God, will my life ever change? Where you feel like going all the way back to where you start at the very beginning of, uh, of the transit in Pisces. And see, that is a test. This is where you need to hold faith in yourself and, uh, and, and be there uh, for yourself at the end of the day. And that is, in an ironic way, the twist of the mirage, right? So just to point out a couple of tiny little things here, don't forget the Saturn. So when in doubt, be strong about what you're not worth anymore. That will, uh, to some degree, keep things moving forward and continue moving forward uh, <clears throat> with your learning. Gobble up information as much as you can. When you do, you'll be rescued from some of these other issues. All right. Well, I think it's time to fly home and wrap it up. Well, that wraps up another week of Soul Horoscopes. One final cute little tip, and that has to do with Jupiter in Gemini. Jupiter in Gemini has moved to Chapter 2, which means there's no more thinking to do. It is time to act on what you've been thinking about literally for six, almost seven months. So move and act on those thoughts, and Jupiter means that fortune will indeed come.
Now, remember, I'm available on the air, and this week, all week long, I will be there Monday through Friday for guided hangouts at 11 a.m. Mercury is direct, and our staff is retrograde. They are recreating themselves now that Mercury is direct, and we're going to come back to you with a whole new front. We're super excited, but come on down. I've got a lot of cool topics. We're going to talk about the new Pope, the God particle, and I've got some excitement, uh, something to introduce you, Dr. Mom. She's this cool lady that helped me heal as well. So come on down. Pacific Time, 11 a.m., Monday through Friday this week, and they're all recorded. And if you're watched over by the Guardian Agency, I will send you emails with the video all week long. And if you'd like to try GA, try it. It's only one penny for the first week. All right, my fellow Soul Gardeners, I love you so much. Until next week, live, love, be.